So guys, thank you once again for joining us on in this conversation we are having. And today, my friend and I will be Emeka will be talking about, you know, kind of a general perspective on Nigeria, but not just Nigeria, more about solutions. You know, one thing we want to achieve in this movement or program or thing we are doing is to talk more about solutions. We want to be solution driven. You know, not, not just complain about Nigeria, oh, this is wrong, oh, that is wrong. So, bro, I would like to, I would like to, now, let me start by saying this, right? Let's, we all know what's, we all know the problems of Nigeria. We all know that, you know, things are going from bad to worse. It has been going, it has been that like that for decades now. The story has not seemed to get any better. But I would like to ask you, right, say, for example, God willing, 20 years from now, you get elected as God of Imo States. What solutions would you would you proffer? How would you how would you try to change the narrative? How would you try to make people believe again that you know what government really works? Accountability is there, leadership is available. You know what what steps are you going to take that will that will be a a clear difference from what people are doing now? You know so what one thing I, one thing I keep saying is when I wanna when I when you wanna when I wanna look at Nigeria. I don't look at Nigeria as per the federal government. I look at Nigeria as per the constituent parts of Nigeria, which are the states. So I want to start at that micro level now and ask, what are those micro level solutions that say, for example, you're leading Imo states that you would do to make the lives of Imo people better? All right. Uh, you said 28. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it's a long time, man. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah, you said you'll take some. So, let's say 15 years, 10, 15 years. Sorry, 10, 15 years. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I can, I can do 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies, my apologies. You know what, you know what, I, believe, you know what I believe is, mm. it's as if, it's as if um, the, year, the year runs very fast. Of course, so, of course. By the time you know, um, and, you know, so, if you keep, if you keep, you know, procrastinating, you, you possibly would, you know, at the end of the day, you may not even get what you want and then yeah. you know, lost of time or something. Yeah, I agree. All right, okay. So delve into your your question. Mm. Um, I would like to um, remind you that the, the more we grow, the more we learn. So possibly what I could tell you right now, if you ask me again in next year, I'm going to say something better than what I'm going to tell you here now. I like right? this. I like this. Is, yeah. Yeah, so, so that um, it, it is not, it is not um, what I'm trying to say right now is not, a, it's not a complete or holistic, perfect, you know, vision, but, yeah. you know, it's a working program. Of course. Yeah, so, but uh, there are certain things I've, I've there are certain things I've uh, pictured that if I'm in government, mm. that uh, I'm going to do. Mm. Right. So, um, one of it is, you know, um, one thing I, I keep looking at Nigerian government right now mm. is we have completely sidelined the future. Mm. So the reason why we go into the reason why we grow is that why we grow, we we grow into we we, we plan ahead. That's that's yeah. exactly what I think Nigerian government right now isn't paying so much attention. Yeah. And I wouldn't go there because the circle of people we find ourselves in. Uh, with sorry, are the people who is as if they are they are in their future right now. Yeah, they, they've they've grown up. So this is this is their future. So they could possibly not say we are planning for the future mm. because there is nothing else left. Someone yeah. who is up to sixty years or seventy years, like the president and some of the people who are advising him, like Lai Muhammad and the rest of them, right? Mm. Are in their seventies. What else is left? Mm. Bible said. If you are, if you seventy years are for those who are strong, and I mean, it's like it's like it's like you are you are given a privilege. Okay, so, yeah. but, so answer my question is, I'm young, I still have a future, mm. and I think the future is in education. Okay. In health, in education, right? Yeah. In a in a in a very good 
in a very good and affordable healthcare system. This mm. is where I'm going to be paying attention, right? Mm. And then in trading and in agriculture. Okay, so every other thing, every other thing hovers around, you know, these ones. So you said so you wanted to say number that. one, education, number two, yeah, affordable one, healthcare. Education, healthcare. Trading. Yeah, affordable healthcare system. Number three is business and trade. Mm. And then uh, number four is agriculture. This is where I'm going to be paying attention as a governor of a state because I am picking all these things. It's one, education means that you have to impart knowledge to people so that by the time they grow, they use yeah. the knowledge they have. So, you know. So let's do this then. So, let's, let's, let's do this this way, right? So let's, in this first segment, let's, let's focus on education number one. So how would you solve and bring down the illiteracy rates in Imo states. Let's forget about Anambra Abiyad. In Imo state, for example, I don't know what the figures are, but how would you I try? Yeah, let's just say broadly, how would you, but, but we know it is, we know it's not high. <laughs> Sorry, we know it's low. Sorry, yeah, we, know, we know it's high, the literacy rate is high, of course, that is what, that's how I should say it. So how would you bring that down? How would you make more people educated? And how would you, not just education of, you know, I said that on my status, right? We need to be more mm -hmm. analytical in Nigeria. And that is down mm -hmm. to our education system. So how would you make the Imo people in secondary school, primary school, and universities, how would you make them more analytical and how would you make them more educated so, so that when they leave those places of education and learning, they will come out better off? Okay, um, so uh, briefly, what I'm going to say is, one, we have two types, fundamentally, we have two types of education, which is formal and informal. Yeah. And then in formal education, we have something we call pedagogy, which is where students sit down and then they see some teachers. Mm. And then they listen, they assimilate what comes from the teachers. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have a little bit of a shift, you know, from that mindset that you know, um, where you sit down in class and then you listen to the teacher and all that. Mm. So first of all, to... Flush out. No, no, no. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say flush out, please. I, I wouldn't say flush out. Mm. But I'll try as much as I can to train yeah. the set of teachers. If it means me, if it means me putting the money for their training mm. so that they leave that level of you know knowledge they have into a higher and technical or technological level of yeah. you know teaching. So first of all. We have to bring the whole teachers from nursery or foundational education uh, level mm. up to the, you know, a higher, um, that is the, 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 the university, the higher institutions, yeah, right? Yeah. So at different levels, organize um, trainings that would, you know, change perception of what they have mm. into future, which is technical and technological. Yes. It is going to take time. I don't I don't mind if it takes three, four months, mm. but it has to be like that. Now, if you have found yourself worthy to have passed from that level to a to that level I want you to handle students, mm. then you are employed. Yeah. Those ones that could not pass that level moves directly into uh, becomes administrative staff so that they okay. can't lose their job. Yeah. So they move away from from education staff to so so they are because they have a, a level because they have a certain level of training, mm. which I believe that yes, somebody that went to school, yeah, it's not as if they don't they don't know anything, but they don't know as much as those that came out with first class or second class. Yeah. But it means that they can handle handle simple things. Mm. So I, I want you to understand what I mean. So first of all is. Get specialists from abroad mm. that come and teach. That's the first thing. Because if you don't teach those who teach, whatever plans you're making is dead. Yeah. Because the reason why I, the reason why I said I'm going to teach, the reason why I said I'm going to train is because I'm going to get to the point where I'll, bring, I'll, I'll say I'm going to bring in equipment mm -hmm. that if you are not properly trained, cannot handle. Of course. And what that means that I'm not, you get what I'm saying? So, this is the process of, you know, so the first level is training those who are in education sector. Yeah. In all of most states. So in teach, all of most states. So, teach the teachers. So retrain, retrain the teachers then. 
Yes, you train the teachers. I know they have trainings already, but it's going to be different. This one is going to be, like I said, it's going to be more of technical and technological. Yeah. Technical means that it is more of not just coming to class and saying blah, blah, blah. It means that you have to come to class and engage the students while the students engage you. That's another level of education we don't have here in Nigeria. Of course, of course. So that is one. Yeah. Now, technological, um, technical, uh, yeah, technological, I mean, is it is no longer going to be a thing of coming to write on the board. Yes. With chalk. Yes. No. Mm. It is different. There is a situation where um, you have to, after teaching students in class, mm. they will have to go home mm. and write assignments, send it to you via mail, yeah. call you on the phone in you, and then you have to do what is called after-school engagement. Feedback. Yeah, feedback. Good. Mm. So that it's not just the thing of, you know, they go home and they write assignments and put it in their bags. Mm. When they come to school the next day, they submit to you. No. Yeah. They submit their other people. So it is more of it is more of technological. So that the students at a very early age mm. learn the pros and cons of technology. Because yes. that is where the future is. What I said um, is more of futuristic, it's not more of now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so after the training, mm. which of course I put on, I, when I say training, people will say, uh, what do you mean by training, training, training? No, after the, the training is going to be at local government levels. Mm. So that every local government in the most states would have a place where, because I know that all these teachers come to the local government to do either registration or receive payment or do or anything. Mm. So that is, so at the local government, it is planned. Yeah. That each teacher, each teacher in this local government will have to go here, go to this place for training and all that. So if you pass that training, if you pass that training, you are enrolled into a new level of teaching. Yeah. Those ones that could not pass would be enrolled as administrative staff, like yeah. you know those that are not, you know, which yeah. are which we equally be trained on that level too. Yeah. So now after training level is the level where I talk about technological. Yeah. So the schools are going to be fully equipped. If it is schools, if it is science technological schools, they are going to be fully equipped, which is the science laboratories is going to be fully equipped. Remember when yeah. I said um, training? Mm. Let, let's not forget that the training I'm talking about is if I am trained to be a hotel staff, yeah. what it means is that I know how to open the door and close it. Yeah, I know how to drink a bed and clean the room without mm. walking quietly and breaking something. Yeah, yeah. So while I am training you to know how to teach, we are equally going to train you to know how to handle equipment without misusing or spoiling them. Yeah, yeah. So I that we don't get to be buying those things again and again. Yeah. You know the you know the culture you know the culture of wastefulness yeah. is very good in Nigeria. Mm, mm. So if those trainings are so you 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 are imparted into the knowledge of handling things with care so that we don't waste resources, which is not so much available to us. Yeah. So when that uh, process of training is done, the next process is where the schools are equipped with all things necessary for technological and technical mm. knowledge, uh, knowledge to get. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if I feel, I can talk to you right now because I know how to use a mobile phone. Mm. I know how to talk to somebody with a mobile phone. And yeah. there are things I could use. Why? Because I have gone through a process of informal training. Either I did it myself or I watched other people do it. Yeah, yeah. So which means, if these students are trained on using technological or technical equipment, mm. it means that they are not just going to, they are not just going to, you know, um, use it. They are going to build on it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. Um, so if, if I train somebody on use of WhatsApp, which means yeah. the person knows that WhatsApp is a medium of com communication. Yeah. He wants to build his own ideas mm. on WhatsApp. Yeah. So they could decide that WhatsApp is no longer good. We want a situation where we can get people to talk virtually mm. and equally, you know, either do some other things and people would know. So yeah. these are the things we want to, you know, impact on the future generation. Yeah, let me, let me, let yeah. me sort of go, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
No, go ahead. I, want, I just want to conclude. I want to move on the second point, but just conclude. Let, just let me. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah, I, want to, I want to. I want to conclude very quickly. Now, yeah. this is another part where I feel that Nigerian government is not doing it well. Mm. Of, of course, we are trying a little bit, but it's not enough. Yeah. Now, after engaging students, after training the teachers and engaging the students with everything they need, mm. because I feel that if you give students, you know, equipment, like if you go to their lab, their lab is fully equipped with everything they need. Yeah. If you come to the computer, the school you do everything they need. Mm. If you go to the agricultural lab, the home economics lab, these things have and these things are going to be because I know there is money. Yeah. There is money to come and do all of these things. If there is no money, I know that there are some ways to sincerely source for funds to make sure that all schools are yeah. fully equipped. Yeah. And of course, someone is there to make sure that there is no waste for resources. Yeah. Now, after the process of training the students, how are they going to show that they have learned? Mm. This is where IT that we do comes in. Mm. But that IT is not going to be because, of course, when you when I, when I say um, these trainings are going to happen and teaching is going to happen and all that beautiful things I say right now, if the students can come out without finding a place of placement, yeah, yeah. that knowledge they have is, is, is a mess. So mm. if, if I am equipping the school, mm. then there is only a way to engage the students so that a civil engineer mm. would have to be part of the um, team that is going to construct road so that your IT and your final year uh, project yeah. is not just going so, to we are going to come and blah, 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 show people. It's going to yeah. be a practical. I built, I followed to construct the road from this end to this end. Yeah. And yeah. then it is, it, is, it is monitored to ensure its sustainability do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just see if it is true. Yeah. So, so that a mechanical engineer is not mm. just going to come out and say, no, there is a motor factory mm. where they are absorbed to build either electronic cars or gas, you know, cars. So, there are four cars that we use now. Yeah, so what you're proposing in essence is... Let me tell you real I'm not just going to give them mm. knowledge. I'm going to give them, give, going to give them a place where they would have to you know, I'm yeah. um, sure that's what they have. Yeah. Thank you. So what, what you're trying to say real quick as we conclude, because I want to, like I said, I want to break this into four sections, right? And one section yeah. wants to be on education. So to conclude and to yeah. recap what you said, you want something, you want a system whereby people don't just go to school, but they go to school to also learn both formal and informal skills. And also oh, what oh, we oh. call, Uber boy, for example, apprentice, apprenticeship. We need to, like like yeah. you said, make sure that in our schools and universities, we begin to put these things in place so that when you finish in the university, you go for an internship, for example, and hopefully from, from being an intern, you start working for the company directly. So I like I like, I like what yeah. you said there. So 